We appreciate it very much, and I thank you for your understanding. And I would also like to say that we feel that it is important and well worth the extra efforts to keep awarding the most important discoveries and celebrating scientific progress, even under those, uh, these difficult times. Now over to the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. This year's prize is about rewriting the code of life. Årets Nobelpris handlar om att skriva om livets kod. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har beslutat att utdela 2020 års Nobelpris i kemi gemensamt till Emmanuel Charpentier och Jennifer Doudna för utveckling av en metod för genomeditering. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has today decided to award the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry jointly to Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna for the development of a method for genome editing. The Königliche Swedish Academy der Wissenschaften hat heute beschlossen, the Nobel Prize für Chemie des Jahres 2020 gemeinsam an Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna für die Entwicklung einer Methode für die Genomeditierung zu verleihen. La Académie Royale des Sciences de Suède a décidé ce jour d'attribuer le prix Nobel de chimie conjointement à Emmanuel Charpentier et Jennifer Downer pour le développement d'une méthode d'édition du génome. Korolevska Academia na Švédsi Regila Sevonia Prisudic Nobelevski Premi Pochimi a Emmanuel Charpentier et Jennifer Doudna za razvitje metoda redaktirovja genoma. We have pictures of the new Nobel laureates uh, on the screen. Emmanuel Charpentier was born in chivisy sur orge in France. She received her PhD from Institut Pasteur in Paris and she's currently director of the Max Planck Unit for the Science of Pathogens in Berlin, in Germany. And as many of you know, she made key discoveries while working at Umeå University here in Sweden. Jennifer Downer was born in Washington, D.C. in the United States. She got her PhD from Harvard Medical School, and she's currently professor at the University of California at Berkeley uh, in the United States. And Dr. Downer is also an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Uh, and as I told you yesterday, the pandemic puts constraints also on the further Nobel Prize celebration. So we are not requesting that the Nobel laureates come to Stockholm in December to pick up their prizes. Instead, we plan for digital Nobel lectures and a digital Nobel Prize ceremony with laureates participating over video links. We are still working on these events together with the Nobel Foundation and now from now on also with the laureates themselves. And we will come back to you with details as soon as possible. But I can guarantee you that uh, Dr. Charpentier and Dauna will receive their awards before the end of the year and that they will be our guests of honor next time we can celebrate Nobel Week with the traditional festivities here in Stockholm. And with that, I'd like to ask uh, Pernilla Wittung Stavsede of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry to make some remarks about the prize. Pernilla. Thank you, Yara. I'm so honored to introduce this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. It's a fantastic prize. Many have been waiting for it. And it's two amazing laureates. To explain their discovery, I will take you from the big scale, things we can see, to the smallest pieces of life that are invisible to our eyes. A human being, like me, is made up of trillions of cells, and thus each cell is tiny, tiny. In each cell, we have our genetic material, the DNA. DNA is long and thin, like a piece of string, that's built up of building blocks called bases. The DNA in each cell contains about six billion of bases placed along this string in a particular order. 
This is what we call the code of life. From this code, thousands of proteins are made in every cell that then perform all kinds of functions in our bodies. So this year's laureates, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna, have developed an elegant system named CRISPR-Cos9, or simply genetic scissors, that can cut the DNA string at one and only one uh, selected position uh, among all the billions of bases. The ability to cut the DNA where you want has revolutionized the life sciences. We can now easily edit genomes as desired, something that before was hard or even impossible. Today, CRISPR-Cos9 is a common tool in biochemistry and molecular biology labs. It's also used in plant breeding and for novel treatments of human diseases. The genetic scissors were discovered just eight years ago, but have already benefited humankind greatly. Only imagination sets the limits for where this chemical tool, that's too small to be visible with our eyes, can be used for in the future. Perhaps the dream of curing genetic diseases will come true. Thank you. Thank you, Pernilla. And now, Klaus Gustafsson, could you give us some more insights into the science that led to the Nobel Prize? Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see if we can... So, uh, thanks to the development of new chemical tools, uh, we know today the DNA sequences of a large number of different genomes. But to merely read this information is not sufficient to understand life's inner workings. We also need to have tools so we can change the information and find out about the function. Uh, with the discovery of the CRISPR-Cas9 genetic scissors, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Downer has provided science with such a tool. We can now change the genetic information in any cell and any organism. And we can uh, find out the function of the genetic material. Uh, the discovery of CRISPR-Cas9, uh, the system, comes from studies of uh, ancient immune system present in bacteria and other microorganisms. So just as we can be infected by viruses, so can bacteria. And when they, if they suffer a virus infection and they survive that infection, then they keep a piece of the viral DNA as a memory. And this is done in a specific region called CRISPR, where you have multiple small memory pieces of DNA. So this is where the information is stored. But how can these pieces of DNA actually defend the bacteria from uh, later infections? Well, in order to do that, you need to transcribe these regions. So you need to make a copy of CRISPR DNA and make it into RNA instead, CRISPR RNA. And in the next step, you need to actually take this CRISPR, this CRISPR uh, RNA, and you need to sort of cut it up in smaller pieces. So you get small pieces of RNA that, that uh, correspond to one single infection event in the past. And how this processing, as we call it, how this sort of cutting up of the RNA takes place is something that uh, Emmanuelle Charpentier demonstrated. She found a new small RNA molecule in the, uh, in, in the bacteria called tracer RNA. And she showed that this tracer RNA would bind to the long form of CRISPR RNA. And then together with two bacterial proteins, Cas9 and RNAs3, would cut the long RNA molecules up in small pieces. So now there was a piece of RNA corresponding to, to a previous infection. But how could this RNA piece actually protect against viruses? To answer that question, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Downer teamed up. And together the two scientists made a crucial discovery. They found that the tracer RNA that Charpentier found a year earlier, the CRISPR RNA, the small piece of CRISPR RNA, 
together with a Cas9 protein, formed uh, uh, the, uh, genetic uh, molecular scissors. And these scissors would use the CRISPR part of the complex and then search for virus DNA within the bacterial cell. And if there was a match where the RNA would match the DNA of the virus, then it would cut the viral DNA and disarm the virus. So this was a great discovery in itself, but the two scientists did not stop there. They wondered, could they make this system even simpler? Because now they had two RNA molecules and one protein. So what they tried to do was to fuse the two RNA molecules into one single RNA molecule, which they call a single guide RNA. And then they investigated if this single RNA, together with the Cas9 protein, could actually target and cleave virus DNA in the test tube, and it could. It worked very nicely. So they had now created a simple two-component two, two, two system. But what they also did was that they started to make artificial guide RNAs. They changed the sequence of the CRISPR part of the guide uh, RNA. And it turned out they could actually cleave almost any sequence of DNA that they would like to target. They had created a programmable a machinery, programmable genetic scissors that could be used to cleave, cleave DNA in the test tube. A couple of years later, other scientists, uh, or half a year later, other scientists uh, showed that this was also possible to do in, in vivo, in cells. And what Charpentier and Downer had predicted already in the original paper turned out to be correct. This was a system that could be used to cleave uh, DNA in any cellular organism. And why is this possible? Well, and why is this important? Well, it's because if you cleave DNA at the precise site, you can use the cell's own machineries to actually change the sequence there. So if you just cleave the DNA, then the cut will be repaired by the DNA repair system present in, in, in the cell. But this repair system is error prone, so there will be an introduction of errors at the cut. And these errors will, in, will inactivate the genetic material there and turn genes off in many of the cases. If you instead would like to change the genetic material very, in a very specific way, edit it, then you can introduce also a short DNA template, this extra piece of DNA with, that, that is similar to the region you want to sort of repair and that the repair machinery can use as a template. And in this way you can introduce specific changes to any genetic region, genome region. So this is, so what can you use this for? Well, you can use this, 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 this new technology has transformed the molecular life sciences. We can now edit basically any genome and we can ask all sorts of different questions. And it can also be used to fix uh, genetic damage. For example, the damage that causes sickle cell an anemia. You can use the CRISPR-Cas9 system, you can take out uh, hematopoietic stem cells from a patient and you can sort of correct for the mutation and then put the cells back. Uh, the enormous power of this uh, technology it means that we need to uh, use it with great care. But it's equally clear that this is a technology, a method that will provide humankind with great opportunities. Thank you, Klaus. Uh, Great discovery and a great prize. And now it's time for questions from you. Uh, we are hoping to get one of our Nobel laureates with us on a phone line, but it's not ready yet. So in the meantime, perhaps you have some questions to us in the panel. And remember to push the button on the microphone stand and make sure the red light is on if you're going to ask a question. We had some problems with that yesterday. Who would like to start?